Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is LaShawn and this is Lush Uncut. The Republican National Convention kicked off last night in Milwaukee. According to reports, the mood at the convention was emotional yet triumphant considering Saturday's events. There were a number of speakers at last night's convention, but the one that made the most headlines was that of 40-year-old model influencer and OnlyFans creator Amber Rose. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies and I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> I realize Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. And that's when it hit me. These are my people. This is where I belong. Leading up to the RNC, Amber Rose made shockwaves on social media when she made her support for Donald Trump public. Here she is with Trump and the former first lady at what I believe is Mar-a-Lago. In addition to that, she also posted this rather revealing picture of her in a bikini and a MAGA hat. Obviously, her speech at the RNC rubbed some people the wrong way. Most prominent amongst them was Daily Wire host, podcaster, theocratic dictator, and author Matt Walsh. He reposted the short clip of Amber's speech, and this is what he had to say. The RNC gives a primetime speaking slot to a pro-abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slut with a face tattoo whose only claim to fame is having sex with rappers. Truly an embarrassing, embarrassment. Not a single voter would be mobilized by this person. Now, some people were not very happy with Matt Walsh's opinion on Amber Rose. Here are a few of the responses that he got. This is from Tristan Tate, if you don't know who Tristan Tate is, he's the brother of Andrew Tate. This is what he had to say. I hear you, Matt, but she is also an American, an American who was followed and speaks to many other Americans who wouldn't listen to a man like you or even a man like me. Let her talk to her people on behalf of what is right. We can dislike some of her values, but all Americans need to make the right choice this year. Um, next here we have a former Daily Wire host Candace Owens. She said she has generally had a change of heart. I've spoken to her. I think her speech was amazing and people have to wake. No, people have wake up calls when you least expect them. Lastly here, I'm going to show a response from Scott Pressler. If you don't know who Scott Pressler is, sorry. Um, he is the man that does all of the groundwork for the Republican Party. He has made quite the name for himself because... He's the one knocking on doors, really doing that hard labor that the Republican Party has been lacking for a very long time. This is what he had to say. Matt, this is completely the wrong take. Amber Rose has even offered to do a voter registration event with me in Philly, where she's from. Her speech was vulnerable and relatable to a lot of folks, especially women. We embrace and welcome at the real Amber Rose. So after reading a lot of the back and forth, that Matt had with a number of people on X, I have come to the conclusion that I am going to have to disagree with Matt Walsh. So a few things. Number one, I get it. Okay. I totally get his objection to this considering the fact that like he said, and I'm going to, you know, share a little more about his opinion a little later. The Republican Party, conservatives, the right, we have been burned a lot by these pop stars, rappers, you know, public figures that have these magical wake up calls and decide out of nowhere that they support Donald Trump or they say something that could possibly be interpreted as right wing and all of a sudden they are glorified and put on a pedestal in conservative land or Republican land online. And then later on, they turn around and they're kind of like, yo, y'all, like, calm down. I never, ever once said that I was a conservative. 
with and we have experienced that a number of times so it feels like maybe he's right in the fact that we kind of have to be a little bit more hesitant when we choose to just push someone at the forefront of our movement because they have had this magical wake-up experience so I get it and Amber Rose's past is not one that is particularly in any way shape or form aligned with most conservative values she is the one that started the famous slut walk which is basically a movement that kind of glorifies um, promiscuity and kind of makes excuses for that. Um, she does have an OnlyFans, and if you don't know what OnlyFans is, then I'm going to leave that up to Google to explain to you, but it's basically um, a subscription-based porn website. Um, so she does do that, and I get it, okay? So I understand his hesitation. However, this is where my rebuttal comes in. We are living in unprecedented time, okay? And this might blow up in our faces, but I feel like we really do need Donald Trump to have a landslide win in November. This election cannot be close considering the um, the aspects of it. Joe Biden is basically a walking corpse at this point. He is not doing well. His entire presence, presidency was a complete disaster, okay? And especially after what happened to Donald Trump on Saturday, he is in a perfect position to, of course, win in November. And it seems as if everybody has come to that conclusion, but this election cannot be close. It cannot be, you know, a, a small victory. Trump needs to, you know, win in a complete landslide. It needs to be a pretty big middle finger to the Democrats in November. And the only way we are going to get that is if we add more people to the Republican voter base at the end of the day and that means that we may have to use some unconventional routes to get that done and also and I think this point has been made over and over again on X it is and that's that we cannot fight the cultural war in the political realm we always say that culture is downstream no politics is downstream from culture which means that the fight starts in the culture there is a lot of people who are going to vote for donald trump that do does not align with a lot of conservative values okay and it's not just going to be amber rose and her supporter there are a lot of people who are somewhat pro-choice who are somewhat okay with certain things that most conservative would be staunchly object to and um we cannot expect people to change their minds because of a political party we have to start with changing their hearts okay and just their overall moral framework and that cannot be done in the political sphere especially the way things are right now more evidence of that is the fact that Trump had to go moderate on abortion now I am a staunch pro-life across the board in all cases I believe that everyone has the right to live and at first I was very disappointed that Trump kind of went in the middle on abortion because I kind of had the same perspective that I feel like a lot of conservative have where it's kind of like listen we have to draw a hard line and stick to that hard line no matter what the cost but when you look at what the cost of another um joe biden presidency it's kind of an obvious choice and an obvious you know decent explanation as to why trump went in the middle in the same way having people like amber rose come into the republican fold you know you kind of have to weigh the pros and the cons of it uh, matt had this really long response to everybody's response to him that i think is really helpful for us to take a look at so bear with me here it's really long um but i definitely think it's worth sharing so he said some thoughts on this Amber Rose thing, since it's apparently extremely controversial to say that the Republicans should, shouldn't give a primetime convention speaking slot to one of the founders of the slot walk. That's so shady. <laughs> First of all, maybe Rose has totally changed and had some kind of conversion experience. There's no evidence of that, only that she likes Donald Trump now. There have been many, many, many examples of conservatives rallying around their new celebrity hero just because the person likes Trump, only to be humiliated and betrayed by the same person shortly after. This has happened countless times. I've called it ahead of time in nearly every case and have been screamed at by conservative the way you are all screaming at me now hopefully this is the first time i'll be wrong and something likely about something like likely this but i highly doubt it something like this i think is what he meant to say he goes on to say 
Second, even if there has been some kind of conversion, that doesn't mean you take someone who has been a conservative for 42 seconds and turn them into a mouthpiece for your movement. Again, how many times do we need to learn this lesson? A person who has been wrong about everything up until approximately yesterday morning needs to be learning and listening, not giving primetime speeches at, poli at a political convention. Third, just to give you an idea of how new Rose's conversion is, if there has been one at all, it was just this past March that she praised the Satanic Temple for helping a lot of people by making sure that they can get abortions. That was March of this year. <laughs> She has not even pretended to disavow that point of view or any of her far left views apart from her dislike of Trump. If it is outrageous and offensive to suggest that a person such as this is perhaps not fit to be a primetime Republican speaker, then conservatism as a movement is in even worse shape than I thought. In conclusion, come on guys, what the hell? Now, I think what Matt is doing is, again, marrying culture with politics. And I think a lot of people's perspective is that we just cannot continue to do that. And I think the one point that I do agree with him on is the fact that literally Amber Rose came out supporting Trump, I think it was about two weeks ago. And fast forward now, her speaking at the RNC is a little fast, is a little... Um, I don't know, presumptuous of us. So I do think that maybe we need to hesitate a little bit when we are putting these people in the front of our movement. That is the one point that I do agree with him on. However, I do still think that it is a net positive. And I feel like we cannot criticize the left for their intolerance um, <laughs> and then do the same thing, right? Because we talk about how, you know, there's people that convert from left to right and then the left turns on them if we're going to be the party that says listen not come as you are but we can have different views you know different perspective on things but as long as our overall mission is to keep this country in one piece then we can at least come together on that and again all things considered you know the times we're in what is at risk in november maybe we just have to kind of suck it up i don't know but i definitely feel like matt was a little wrong on this and listen who knows maybe this could be the beginning of a real and honest conversion for amber rose i know there's a lot of people that started off um just joining the right or the conservative movement because they decided that the left was crazy and they supported Donald Trump. And then a couple of months or even a few days, a few years down the line, they are professed Christian. I think Russell Brand is a great um, example of this. So I think um, we're just going to have to take the risk here.